ready to really dive deep into collaboration. Not the surface level stuff you hear everyone toss around, but like truly valuable or another buzzword for businesses. And get this, our main source, it's actually from Richard Branson's Virgin blog. Interesting. Yeah. Branson's not just what some entrepreneur who hit it big, right? He's practically built like a whole empire on this idea of collaboration. Yeah. If he's putting emphasis on it, I bet there's something there. That's what I'm thinking. This is airlines, music, even space travel we're talking. Huh. And it all comes back to collaboration at its core. So what's the article actually saying? It jumps right into how collaboration, it's so overused now, it's almost meaningless. <laughs> like, think about it. When was the last time you actually heard a company say, we're against working together? Seriously, never. It's like saying you're against oxygen at this point. Right. But the author, and this is interesting, they're a collaboration expert. That's an actual job. They say, we've got to get back to what collaboration really means. And the example, it's kind of wild. Okay, now you have to tell me, what is it? Synchronized swimming with sharks. Close. Way more high stakes, though. Think like rival airline pilots. Wait, really? How does that even work? Okay, so picture this. You've got pilots, right? From competing airlines, up in the air, all trying to navigate the same airspace. Obviously, they've got to keep everyone safe. So they have to collaborate, even though on the ground, their companies are literally trying to, you know, outperform each other. That's a really good example of how collaboration it can exist in the most unexpected places. Yeah. Like It highlights that it's not always about, you know, being best friends. It's more about working toward that shared outcome, even with totally different motivations, you know what I mean? And that shared outcome in this case being not having a mid-air collision. Talk about high stakes. It makes you think even in super competitive fields, there's often a ton of collaboration probably happening behind the scenes. Totally. And the article takes this idea even further within an analogy. I'm kind of curious to see what you think. They compare effective collaboration to a human wave in a stadium. Okay. At first I was like, huh. What does a wave of cheering fans have to do with, say, like, a big business meeting, you know? Yeah, it seems random, right? But think about it. Even something as, like, effortless as a human wave, there are still underlying rules and structure to it. Like, people have to be paying attention, time it right, and respond to, like, each other's energy. It's about individual actions all coming together for a bigger collective result. So in a way, it's a spontaneous form of collaboration, just on a massive scale. And when it works, it's pretty amazing to see. But how do we actually take that kind of energy and coordination and translate it to a more like, you know, professional setting? That's where meetings come in, believe it or not. Uh, like the article makes this point that collaborative meetings, those are actually the backbone of organizations that are killing it, but not the kind of meetings you and I are probably used to. You know, we're uh, kind of going way past the what they call the printing age of meetings. Printing age of meetings. What is that like when we all used to what pass around printed agendas? Do those even exist anymore? You laugh, but that's kind of the idea they're getting at. The article's talking about all those outdated tools, you know, and techniques we still cling to. It's like flip charts drowning in sticky notes, those endless slideshows beamed up on the wall, anything that keeps people stuck in their own little world instead of really connecting, you know? Okay, yeah, now I see where you're going with this. We've got all this amazing tech at our fingertips, but we're stuck using these, like, old school meeting formats. And yeah. that can totally kill creativity and slow everyone down. Exactly, and that's the author's whole point. They're saying by actually embracing these digital tools, meetings can become these dynamic, interactive spaces where everybody can actually contribute, and it doesn't matter where they are. Everyone's on the same playing field. So are we talking about those giant touchscreen whiteboards everyone's got in their conference rooms now? I've always wondered if those were just for show. They're part of it. Imagine a meeting where if you're remote, you can still interact with the people in the room. Everyone's throwing out ideas, you know, in real time. Decisions are made. Everyone can see what's happening. No more trying to figure out someone's handwriting or feeling left out if you're calling in. It's about leveling the playing field. Okay, yeah, that does sound kind of revolutionary. I can already feel my note-taking anxiety going down. But it can't all be about the tech, right? You still need people to, you know, actually want to work together. You're totally right. Yeah. Technology is just a tool, right? It enables things. What really matters is if you're fostering that mindset of collaboration. And the article really stresses, they call it meeting discipline. It's important. Meeting discipline. Okay, sounds intense. Don't tell me there's homework involved. <laughs> Not quite. It's not about being stiff. It's about having a good structure. 
you know, some ground rules for how the meeting should actually run. Think of it like what the rules of a game or something. You got to have rules to make sure the game is fair and that everyone's playing by the same, you know, guidelines. I like that the analogy works. So instead of just like winging it, you go in with a clear purpose for the meeting. You know what your role is, maybe even some ground rules for how to engage. Seems like common sense, but I bet a lot of us, you know, could use a little meeting discipline in our life. Absolutely. And this is where it gets even more interesting. They're saying this whole digital collaboration thing, it shouldn't stop at meetings. You mean like using project management tools, messaging apps, all that to communicate more efficiently? Exactly. Imagine like platforms, what Slack or even Teams as ways to streamline work and cut down on those email chains that never end. It's making things more immediate, you know, transparent, efficient. Like you're taking those good meeting principles and applying them to the entire workday. So it's more like you're weaving collaboration into how you work, not just making it a one-off thing or saying, okay, time to use the collaboration tool now. Exactly. It's about really building that culture of we're always collaborating. Yeah. You know, but I know you're probably thinking this all sounds great in theory, but how do we actually do it? That's exactly what I was going to ask. It's easy to just say ditch the flip charts and go digital, but what are the actual steps people can take? Well, the cool thing is the article does get into specifics. First thing, they say choosing the right tech is key. It's not just about getting the fanciest gadget. They actually call out interactive flat panel displays as like a game changer, especially these ones from CTOCH. So not all touch screens are made equal, huh? What makes these ones stand out? It's all about the features that are built for collaboration. Like they have PCs built right in so you're not messing with laptops. There's whiteboard software integrated, video conferencing super easy, and bonus points, especially for, you know, the budget folks out there. The author points out that because these displays are energy efficient, companies can actually save money in the long run. Okay, now that's an argument anyone can get behind. Even the CFO is on board now. But what about those of us who, you know, maybe don't have the budget for a fancy new screen right now? Any advice for putting these ideas into practice on a smaller scale? Oh, absolutely. The article actually suggests starting small. You can even use free tools like Trello or even just using stuff you've already got, like the features built into Teams, but using them better, more intentionally. It's about making the most of what you've got already. You don't have to wait for the perfect setup. So really maximizing your tools and using them in a way that promotes collaboration. Yeah, exactly. And even more than the tools, they emphasize how important it is to cultivate that collaborative mindset. Stuff like being really clear about goals for each meeting, making sure everyone has a role so they stay engaged and making it a space where people actually feel comfortable sharing their ideas openly. Yeah. Those are all super important. It's about that culture shift, not just the tech upgrade. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, you could have the most amazing, sophisticated tech in the world, but if people aren't motivated to use it and they don't feel empowered to collaborate, it's not going to do much, you know? So it sounds like as we wrap up our deep dive on collaboration, it's clear this is way more than just a buzzword businesses throw around. It's really about understanding the why, creating the right environment, and giving people the power to work together in a way that's you know meaningful and productive. Couldn't have put it better myself. And it's like, if something as simple as a human wave, right, even that needs a certain level of coordination and shared understanding, imagine what we could do when we bring that same intention and energy to how we collaborate at work, even in our lives, you know? That's an awesome thought to end on. So listeners, next time you hear someone talking about collaboration, remember, with the right approach, it just might unlock something incredible, you know? Whether it's new ideas, better results, it could be huge for you and your team.